What's up, you guys? I'm Extra Eric from 1033 Amp Radio, and I am here with Suitcase City. Yo, yo. How's it going, you guys? Very good. Are you alive today now that you just told us that you were sharing a bed all night? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Have you made your way up here before? Um, up to Boston? Very briefly. Briefly? For shows? Yeah, I've been here, I've been here before because uh, I was born in Rhode Island, actually. Oh, my, no way. Yeah, I got family that lives out in Massachusetts. Right across so the border. Yes, sir. So Look at that. It's always nice to be back in the home area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice up here, even though we're getting like swamped by a storm right now. Well, nothing different than Florida, so we're used to it. <laughs> That's good. Well, jumping into the music, say to start, for people out there that don't know your music, how would you characterize the sound of Suitcase City? Because you guys touch on multiple different genres from hip hop to art, uh, to excuse me, rap and then EDM. So yeah, I mean, well, we have R and B too, so I wouldn't like hesitate <laughs> saying it. like we. I mean, it's it's hard to say. I mean, we do combine a lot of genres. It's more or less just like what we think sounds good. To be honest, like we don't go into our music thinking, oh, let's do a pop record. Oh, let's do a, a rap record. It's like we'll just start a song. Yeah, and then put our vocals on in however it comes out is just the way it kind of is like you know and we have a lot of different producers that send us stuff so whether it's an electro beat or you know a hip-hop producer like it just depends like it we're gotcha. but i think it's all cohesive like i think it, like once our vocals are on it it all kind of comes together regardless of what we do yeah so going off of that i know you've heard uh you've said before that you guys typically hear a beat before you write over it is that something you do for all the songs or just do you bounce back and forth from song well, to song. When we first started making songs, that's what we were doing. But recently, it's been um, more like building the track together with the producer. So, you know, it might start off with like one guitar and then it'll turn into like the guitars with the drums and mm -hmm. then we'll make it work like that. So is that your new single about you, which is gaining a lot of momentum lately? Is that how that track came? That track actually came. Um, the beat was already done and Mike had a hook on the record. It was sitting on his computer for a while. So. We actually did that track about a year and a half ago. So that long? Yeah. Are you surprised with how much it's really blowing up lately? Um, not not really surprised. Um, we kind of knew. It we kind of knew that was would, a track you knew yeah, would be big. We kind of knew it was like a hit. Like once we recorded it, it was like everyone's favorite, favorite <laughs> favorite song. It's just like it's it's weird because that that track actually, like, wasn't even for us. To begin with, like I, I did the hook on it when I was like listening to like Fetty Wap or something. And I was like, all right, maybe we could like try and pitch this to somebody. And then he came over one time and my boy was there. Fetty um, Wap or my other, No, Cam, Cam, <laughs> Cam came over and uh, my other bo boy was there. And um, he's like, yo, this track is dope. And he's like, I'm going to get on it. Like just he liked to mess around and rap. And Cam was like, no, he's like, I'm going to get That's on when it. you knew you were like, yeah, we're taking like, it for <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Cam put his verse on that day and then we just kind of like rolled with it and. It went from there, that's but crazy. it wasn't even supposed to be for us. That's why it was kind of weird. So going into the creative process of your EP, Indigo, did you come up with the concept for the EP before you started writing songs, or did you start crafting songs like About You and then were like, oh, hey, at what point in the creative process were you like, I want to craft this into something? I mean, me personally, I don't know about Cam, but I think it all came together kind of at the same exact time um, because we were struggling super hard to find the sound we wanted mm -hmm. and so indigo there's like a like the meaning behind it is it's not blue it's not purple it's kind of like somewhere in the middle and it's just like where we were we were like do we want to go pop do we want to be rap? do we want to do this and then like the whole race racial thing you know he's black i'm white so we were just trying to like bring everything together and indigo is just like that that middle ground of everything so it was like that's kind of like how everything came together at the same time. It was just like we found our our sound somewhat. Mm -hmm. So we were like, all right, let's roll with this. And then just that's how the, the name came about. So but anything he's been chatting away. Yeah, he pretty much touched up on like the whole title, the meaning and everything behind that. Um, now, I think Indigo also like. Like you said, it's it's more about like the unification of everything. So mm -hmm. um, I think that um, people don't really know this, but. We had an we had an EP titled Indigo before we dropped the one that you know about. Like it's released, like or did you just was, have it crafted? It was, it was released. It was out. It was out on SoundCloud, and we scratched all the records and took it off because. So did anything from that prior one make it onto this? Um, what was on there? I think I think Bout You might have been on there, and then there was like another version of Stay the Night that had a completely different. Stay track the Night's a fire track too. Thank I you. I like that one. 
Yeah. Right. It's it was yeah, crazy. A completely different record. Did fans sort of like go along with that, or were they like? Um, because I can't imagine you could just like drop something and then scrap it and then re-release something with the exact same name. Well, no, at the time we didn't have any fans, so it wasn't like a big <laughs> deal, you know. He had like maybe a couple hundred plays on just each playing track. that SoundCloud yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's too funny. Well, going forward, do you guys like what are your artist influences out there in the genres that you're working in? There's no one for me. It's no one like specific. Like if I hear. Like, I might listen to EDM one day, I might listen to a pop record, I might listen to hip-hop. Growing up, though, um, my dad put me on, like, Biggie and Nas and Jay-Z, people Classics. like that. So, like, when I'm listening to hip-hop, like, that's, like, more what I want to hear. But, see, nowadays, it's it's changed, and I get it. And, you know, there's a time and place for, for everything, mm -hmm. I think. Um, Anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, well, just, I've always looked up to Justin Timberlake. <laughs> um, I just think he's, like class act like oh, all around you know, when it comes to acting music whatever he does i just feel like he's never in drama he's always just kind of like you know has has his head on straight so <laughs> i've always kind of looked up to him is there a and, particular um, era of justin timberlake that you look up to because he sort of go his music has bounced around a lot as well like if i mean to be honest i didn't like the di the like the disney pop stuff like that he did like but, way back yeah you got to start somewhere i'm you know sort of I mean? going I, more between like future sex love sounds and the 2020 experience you know what i mean <laughs> yeah no like the I, real stuff I kind of, I like it all, man. Like, he, just because he's, I don't know, I feel like he can always just do do what he, he just Deliver does it well. It. He does it so well. <laughs> like, I don't know how to explain it. He's he's always been somebody that I've been like, wow, like, everything he does is so just next level, mm -hmm. you know, and it, like, sets the bar for everybody. Um, So him and, like, I don't know, I always listen to the Beatles growing up, so that's kind of, like, a big influence on me. And I think that's where the acoustic side comes into um our music is just they were always – just very uh, the sound uh, i've always been a melody person mm -hmm. so for me that's a huge thing and they always had crazy melodies and i love that well what can the fans going forward expect next from you guys expect to see us a lot more a lot more pictures a lot more <laughs> videos um we're, branding is like is really going to be really big with us um you know everything with the xcc logos and just like from like when we do our first headlining tour, like they're going to see, there's going to be like certain, t like the tickets are going to be printed like a citizenship pass. It's like you're coming into Suitcase <laughs> That's cool. City. Just like the branding stuff is going to get like, you know, more intense. And then we're just going to keep dropping music. Damn. All right. Well, you'll see a lot more of them. Suitcase City. Thanks, you guys. Thank you.